I'm in the tune of freedom song. Everybody get on board. From north to south, from shore to shore. We've got two major systemic problems in America that we can fix virtually overnight. Okay, The federal government, per our lovely President Barack Hussein Obama, has now made it a, well, it's a pretty much how it goes. Through George Bush, because of the Patriot Act, uh, Barack Obama came into play and now has usurped power through the executive branch. This is why it's incredibly important, first of all, to, to make sure everybody understands, I am not a Republican. Republican politicians are a nightmare, and they're part of the reason we, we got here. When I was a kid, the saying was, uh, the Democrats are in part, it, or the Democrats come in to screw everything up, and then it's time to bring the adults back into play. Okay, and that's kind of what happened growing up as I was a kid. We had Jimmy Carter who was a, well, I sat in the gas lines myself. I'm sure some of you did too, so I it, <laughs> couldn't imagine that being a good thing. Uh, Ronald Reagan came in, and, and although you'll hear progressive and liberals scream about the horrendousness of, uh, of Ronald Reagan, I find it kind of absurd. Uh, two of the things that I am not a big fan of with Reagan, although I understand what he was doing, I still don't agree, was first of all, it was amnesty. Amnesty. Ronald Reagan was the man who signed off on amnesty and turned uh, California from a Republican state into Democratic virtually overnight. And I was born in California. I was raised in California. California's a great state, but we're a mess out here right now, and everybody knows it, specifically because of Democratic policies. So first of all, I'm not a Republican. I'm certainly not a Democrat. I am now what you call the independent voter. Let me come back to Reagan really quick, because a lot of you liberals like to, to bang on him a little bit, and then a lot of you conservatives like to, to talk about he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. He was a human male. He was a man. I appreciate his speech. His, his, he was very inspirational, and I think those things are wonderful. But let's look at actually what specifically happened. Ronald Reagan changed our country um, in some places better, in some places worse. Going through uh, the Cold War was an, uh, was an unbelievable time. I remember actually our teachers turning off the lights and then telling us to get under our desks in preparation for nuclear war. Not like that desk was going to do anything about it, but that's what they actually would do. We were actually preparing for the commies, Russia, USSR, to bomb us. Reagan came in when this was a very real thing. There were movies like the day after being played, and we all watched these things. I lived out in the middle of nowhere with my family, and I actually took a shovel out into the woods and started digging a hole, a bunker, that in case these things would happen. I was under the age of 10. <laughs> so, all you people out there that hate Ronald Reagan, he led us through a horrendous time because he understood economics. He understood human behavior, more importantly, and he understood the American work ethic. And so we exploded, and the, the arms race took off. We built so many of these things that the Russians couldn't keep up, and eventually through communism, which is oppression, their entire world fell apart over there. Reagan actually did more for the world, in my opinion, uh, than he probably did for America. All right, because what he ended up doing uh, is giving us amnesty, which, as we all know, virtually doubled the Democratic Party. I mean, it's crazy to watch all of these things taking place and not really attribute them to how they happen. Okay, so liberals, Ronald Reagan gave you two things you're screaming for right now. He gave you amnesty, which is what you want right now, okay, which is virtually until Reagan made it the law was against the law to do, making people citizens just blanket because of basically the color of their skin, that's racism. It's what it is. Mm -hmm. He did that, okay? Well, along with all the other Democratic people who decide, okay, this will be great, we'll do this, and making everybody a, make everybody a citizen. Rather than having to earn being American, go through the process, be here, work, work hard, not be any criminals, not be on any kind of government programs. He just said, okay, blanket statement, that's called democracy blanket statements rather than focusing on the individual. 
and going through one at a time, which is specifically what we should have done. Number two, I believe it was 1986, <laughs> Ronald Reagan made any hospital out there that takes federal funds uh, a mandated uh, server to any person showing up whether they could afford it or not for health care. Whether they were a citizen, it didn't matter. If they showed up and they needed help, the, any hospital getting federal funds had to get it. Now, we could get into insurance and hospitals and why I, my personal feeling is none of these hospitals should be receiving federal funds at all, but putting all that stuff aside, he gave you the first version of Obamacare. In fact, it's actually better than Obamacare. He was showing a little bit of compassion. Hey, if you can't afford it and you just got hit by a car, go to a hospital where, where the United States of America is, is paying for it and we'll take care of you basically for free, all right? What a bad guy. I mean, what, you know, now, now, is that a sustainable system? No, it isn't, which is why I blame him for progressively what has happened here through all these democratic policies. Again, amnesty turned California into a democratic state, which is now going to be going to be defaulting on a lot of stuff. And for those currently who read the, the, the uh, new article in the LA Times, according to research from, I believe it was NASA, California will be out of water within a year. Now, they blame this on the drought. No. First of all, that, that assumes that you or we or us actually control the weather. And oh, as I, and I know the, the lovely Al Gores of the world and all the people out there think that you control the weather and you control the climate. You don't. Okay? You don't have any control over that. You guys are amazing to me. What we do have control over is the population here. And California, over the last 20, 25 years, has allowed the population to grow and grow and grow. At the same time, the environmentalists, have, the lobbyists, have owned uh, the construction here, right? So they won't allow any more dams, lakes, or excuse me, dams or reservoirs to be built. You cannot allow a population to grow, whether legally or illegally, and not understand that consumption, right back to needs of a human being, water will take place. We were rationed last year, and again, according to LA Times, uh, we have about a year's left worth of water in California. Now, personally, do I know what that looks like? I don't, I don't. But my guess is if that's actually true, and there is no more water in California in a year, well, I'm fairly certain some pretty big changes are coming because without water, nobody can survive, okay? But this is where we are. This is what we've come to. We now have quote-unquote liberal papers writing about California's decisions. Again, it didn't happen overnight. You don't go from 180 to 300 in a week, okay? You go from 180 to 300 in years, in steps, and we've gotten away from the individual. We've allowed the quote-unquote democratic policies to take over in California. How do we get here? Through Ronald Reagan. Well, God bless, Democrats. You got what you wanted. I mean, give the man a break. It's unbelievable. But let me get back to my point. My point here is most of the time people are out there saying certain things um, that it's gone, it's unfixable, we can't do this. Not only can we do this, we're going to do this, but we have to understand how. And we have to do that through the understanding of human behavior. To understand human behavior, we come right back to water, food, shelter. Everybody understands that, water, food, shelter. If you're, you could be the richest guy in, in the world, and if you haven't had food in two or three weeks, Trust me, you don't, it won't matter how much money you have, you, you're going to need something to eat, and that's your primary need. You won't be worried about whether your Maserati's filled up with gas or, or whether Warren Buffett can do whatever he wants. He needs to eat. Okay. So come back again to human behavior and understanding human behavior, water, food, shelter, belongingness, where we belong. We have to actually free the American citizen and embrace human behavior and understanding of that. We are all born with free will, as I've said before. None of us want to be told what to do. And part of belongingness we get through our families and our jobs. So we have to strengthen our families and create more work. It's really a simple concept, right? So then why are we taxing families and taxing work? This doesn't make any sense. The federal government actually penalizes people who are married if they don't have children. They're a family. They're a family. 
And not to mention, let's say they do have kids. The federal government still pounds away at people who have children. How is it, how, what do you think you're going to, how are you gonna benefit a family by taxing the actual process of that? Okay? We don't wanna tax families, and we certainly don't wanna tax work. And we can control both of these things. Federal income tax must be abolished. In fact, all taxes that have anything to do with income must be abolished. Capital gains, gone. Corporate, gone. Payroll tax, gone. Everything's gone. You want wages to go up? They'll go up overnight if you get rid of a payroll tax. Companies will just simply make more money. If we take, if we got rid of the corporate tax, right now it's roughly about between 30 and 40 percent. If you got rid of the corporate tax, every company around the world would be screaming to get back to America. They want to be here anyway. It's the, we're the safest place on the land. We're currently right now, because the rest of the economies or the rest of the nations out there are making horrendous choices with their money, not that we aren't, we are, but we are the place where everybody's hiding. Right now the dollar is strong, not because we're doing anything well, but because everybody else is doing it so, so poorly. It's like the, we're the furthest house away uh, on the block from the dump, okay? It doesn't smell as bad, but it still smells pretty bad. If we got rid of corporate tax just alone, the jobs, we would, we would create so much wealth in our country. Our land would be worth so much more. Income tax is not a choice. You're forced to pay it. Okay? Freedom dictates that if we're going to be taxed on anything, that we have a choice. That's what consumption tax is. Okay. We remove income tax completely from everything, allowing everybody to work, work freely, not have to spend all of our money re in reports and regulations and a wide variety of other things that have nothing to do with the benefit of the human animal. The American citizen isn't being benefited by paying taxes. There's no benefit there. The politicians are benefiting. People at the top are benefiting. We aren't benefiting free from it. Our roads are a mess out here. And according again, California's not even gonna have any water in a year. Now, I think that's a bit of a stretch, but we'll find out whether it's half of California doesn't have any water or more probably what's more likely going to happen. Water goes from your water, your normal water bill for the average family might be 50 bucks a month to now $400 a month. If you have a pool, maybe it's been drained. Those things are very, can be very, very real. Why? Not because of the drought, because of overpopulation and the democratic policies for so long, ignoring that if you're gonna stack people in a place, house after house after house, or what they call affordable housing, then you better build some affordable water. But they didn't do that. And now we are here, it's a mess. We can fix this, but I can guarantee you this much, ladies and gentlemen, there's only one way out of this, and it's by completely getting rid of all taxes that have to do with income. It's coming one way or the other. Please, as you're listening to me right now or you've read my book, make a little note what the time and date is uh, that when you're seeing this. Everybody, it's gonna be different. Some people are watching this as it's being posted. Some people will watch this probably six months from now. But make a little time and date to notice when you actually saw this. I can guarantee you uh, a consumption tax will be coming to America somewhere in the future. Why? Because it's <laughs> when the American government doesn't actually pay some of this debt back, and eventually that's gonna happen as well because they just simply can't do it. The interest rates will, will take care of that themselves. People will start actually bartering, trading. They'll start figuring out a way to do things together because, well, we've gotta drink water, we've gotta eat, we've gotta live someplace. And we'll start doing, and that's already happening around America right now anyway. People are already making deals and working things out uh, that go around the government because the government's so oppressive. We remove it. You do not have a choice. Let me make this very simple. You do not have a choice when you pay income tax. You do not have a choice. For most of us, they just take it right out of your check. That's it. Gone. See ya. Bye-bye. That's not freedom. That's not taxation. We're getting zero representation, so we're still getting the taxation, and they're just ripping it out of us. Right? Remove that completely. We free the entire America, the, the strongest part of America, 
or one of the strongest parts is our work ethic. We are known for it. We are known for not taking vacations. We are known for working 10, 12, 14 hours a day because we want it, right? Because we pursue happiness. This is what we're here for. This is what we're here for. We are the most hyper-competitive nation on the planet. We make up less than 5% of the population. We're, un we're 300 million people. There are billions of people on the planet. And yet when we show up to anything, we dominate. We put our five, six, seven-year-olds, we put shoulder pads on five-year-olds. We let them roar. They're playing football, peewee football. We have Little League Baseball. We have it for boys. We have it for girls. We are the most competitive. It's fantastic. I remember as a little kid. At the same time, we teach ethics. We teach rules. I remember specifically taking the pledge, playing Little League. I, I will always do my best, but no matter whether I win or lose, I would never say lose because I don't believe in losing. Um, I, will, I will honor the game. Uh, there's an entire, the entire thing there, but you understand. I remember that's what we teach. Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Eagle Scouts, we teach these things. We've gotten away from this. We've got to get back to hyper -com competition, which makes us great. At the same time, ethics. Shaking hands afterwards, saying, okay, good job. I've been in plenty of situations. I've been competing my whole life, and I've won. And I've lost. Losing sucks. I hated it. I was one of the worst losers you'd ever seen. I wouldn't even go talk to the other team. I even had sometimes friends on the other team. And, I would, and if we lost the game, I'd just go the other way, and they would actually hunt me down in groups and tackle me. <laughs> I had to get off of me, all right, because I hated to lose. That's what we are in America. That's why we are, again, less than 5% of the population. We have the largest economy on the planet. We have the largest military on the planet. We also have the worst generation ever in charge right now, and we've got to get this under control. So, removal of all federal income tax, all of it. You go to work. You, you make $15, $20, $30 an hour, whatever you're going to pay, you take it all home. There's no recording, no reporting, no wasted money going to all this, legis or all this regulation that's happening. We get rid of all that completely. We go to a consumption tax. Now, you're going to hear a lot of people, and that's a choice. If you don't want to buy something, then you don't have to pay the tax. Think about that. If you actually worked hard, and there's very specific things that I've laid out how we actually do this. Um, certain certain foods, there's no tax on. The purchase of one house, there's no tax on. Um, there's a, And again, I'm not going to go through all of it right now. I've written about college columns on this as well as it's in my book. It's very specific on how we're going to fix this. And I've done the numbers on this. Don't let anybody tell you that can't be done. Actually, we'll probably end up bringing in more money to the federal government, which is why we'll have to drop the rates. Okay. But regardless of all that, think of it this way. Income tax, because we've all been raised this way. We all think, well, it's just the way it's going to be. What, what's the saying? There's two guarantees in life, death and taxes. doesn't have to be that way. doesn't have to be that way. We just have a horrible generation of politicians that keep feeding it to us. This can be different, but it's up to you and me. So think about income tax. Income tax is very simple. It's forced. It's forced. Okay? That's not freedom. That's not freedom. It's forced. It's taken. It's stolen from us. And then told, oh, we're going to make everything better. How are they making everything better? From Bush through Obama, we've been at war. They are not making everything better. Nobody, nothing gets better with war. Nothing. I don't care what they try to, say, to feed us through this wonderful uh, history lesson that the only thing that saved the United States of America uh, was World War II. It's the stupidest, most ignorant thing I've ever heard. Nothing gets better in war. And frankly... No side, really, when it comes down to it, nobody wins in a war. One side just loses a lot more. A lot more. Now, do we have to stand up and fight at times? Absolutely, amen. And for those of you out there, you know what I'm talking about. I've been fighting my whole life, and so have you. Right? We won't be bullied, we won't be pushed around, we won't, be, we won't allow others to be bullied or pushed around. God bless, I'm with you, brothers and sisters. But the reality of human behavior is we need to embrace the greatness of America and the greatness of America. One of our pillars is our work ethic. We aren't French. We don't take eight weeks, months. This the whole food stamp thing is driving me nuts. I can't imagine that everybody out there wants to be on food stamps. I know you don't. And we have a way to actually fix this. We have a way to fix this. But you gotta come together. Income tax, forced forced your free will you're being forced to do something consumption tax if you eat the right foods fruits vegetables meats 
milk. Again, there's a whole program for it. You buy you buy one house, and you you live you live any way you want. You could almost live tax free. God bless. Have a great life. That's what we want. All right? You want to buy a bag of chips or a coke? You're gonna pay a little bit more. It's your choice. You're not being forced income tax to do it. So when you start hearing people say, oh no, it can never work. First of all, it's going to happen because I can guarantee you 18 trillion is going to turn to 20 trillion in debt and 20 is going to turn to 22. We might be at 25 trillion in debt before Obama leaves. Our GDP for the United States of America is about 16 trillion. <laughs> That's gross. That's not profit. Debt will come for you. It will come for me. It will come for the entire country. Debt doesn't care what you believe in. It doesn't care what your gender is. It doesn't care your color. Debt comes and crushes everybody. It is the worst thing out there. It makes everything worse. It makes everybody less safe. It puts children in harm's way. We can fix this. We can fix this. We have to embrace new ideas. Number one, income tax, gone. Free the people to go work as much as they want to work. Not if you make more money, you're going to pay more money to the government. Wrong. You make more money, you're going to keep more money. You go out there and work hard, and guess what you're going to do? You're going to go spend that money. Because what are you going to do? Stack it up around you? <laughs> you're going to want to go use it to buy things. Makes perfect sense, right? Don't let anybody tell you it isn't true. You're going to hear it. Oh, consumption tax is so regressive. It's going to hurt poor people. It's actually going to be the thing that helps you the most. Do you really think rich people care about paying taxes? They're rich. They have so much money. They just keep finding loopholes and write-offs, and, they, and they'll go in and they'll, and they'll send money to more politicians and lobby to find new loopholes and new ways to do things. We get rid of income tax. We don't have the IRS anymore. There's no loopholes, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to buy it, you pay a little bit more. And the way I, that the way I structured it is that the more expensive things are, uh, the, the taxes that will come in. Not only can this work, it's what works. It's actually what we used to do in the country when it was first founded. Okay? So instead of evolving as humans, which we've done uh, throughout America, but keeping and then taking on horrendous tax policies, let's actually evolve and free the people. Get rid of income tax. Can you hear the wheels as they roll along? Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm in the tune of freedom song. Come on, come on, come on. Everybody get on board. From north to south, from shore to shore.